I need to be open to everything. You know, um, I need to be open to director's notes. I need to be open how other actors work. I need to be open to their behavior uh, off camera. I need to be open to all these things. And I try not to be influenced by much of it. I don't have expectations. Yeah. I'm just like, I don't know what I'm getting into today. That's the best way to approach it because otherwise you're really fucking yourself over. Filmmaker Magazine presents Back to One with Peter Rinaldi. Spencer Granice is an actor. He sat down with me on the Upper West Side of Manhattan to talk about the work. Do you have a way that you typically step into a new character? Do you have a typical road you go down to try and wrap your arms around this new person that you have to play? I mean, it's different for every one, right? Uh, I think that acting for me has always been a pretty lucid process. I think that it it's all instinct for me. So I think what I typically do, like almost every script, unless it's playing a real person, I just skim the script for the first time. I skim the side, I skim the script. I take it in and process it a little bit but I don't make any concrete decisions. I don't uh, try to add inflection or tone or anything to anything. And I, I try to let whatever has entered my brain kind of build organically in my subconscious. And the hope is that and most of the time it works, that it floods into the conscious. And once I start feeling it uh, in that space, then I can really kind of start to break things down and dissect yeah. and get to like uh, the marrow of mm -hmm. the character. Mm -hmm. and, and then I'll start, you know, and then that just starts uh, connecting to the scenes that I need to do as well. And uh, yeah, I don't know. So that's, th there's like a, a, you know that sliding is gonna happen, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Or you, or you just, you expect it. Like, you know what I mean? So you're not doing any work to kind of move that from the not, unconscious to the... There are times that I do. It just depends on the role. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. it's not, it's never the same, really. Like, I will start it that way. And then if it doesn't feel right, then I'll yeah. take another yeah. angle. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 um, yeah. But that's typically how I start things. Because yeah. I just don't, being malleable is everything in this, yeah. in this, in this uh, craft, you know? Yeah. And... So I don't ever want to get stuck. And so if I start yeah. to do that over and over and do it a certain way, then I'm just going to get stuck in that way. And it's hard for me to shake. And I started that yeah. way as an actor. I was going to say, you must have started that way. Oh, right? I it's absolutely did. I would practice in like the beats <laughs> and everything was on point. And like, it still was like, it got me into like, you know, uh, I took a couple acting classes. I'm not formally trained mm -hmm. at all. I, uh, I didn't start acting until I was 30 years old, mm -hmm. you know, and I just, and, but I knew that from like starting to audition and like being in class, I was like also just studying other people and be like, they're stuck. They're doing the same exact way. I kind of do that too. And I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I really worked against it and started to just hone it a, a different way. You yeah. Know? yeah. And uh, be clay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. You tried to avoid acting, right? You mm -hmm. wanted to you wanted to kind of just be around film and do film stuff, right? And you tried to to do other jobs with film to yeah. kind of like you almost actively tried. You're like, this is going to be too hard to be an actor. Let me do this, 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 and then you yeah. finally were like, fuck. <laughs> I guess I have to be an actor because wow. this is what I really want, right? Wow, you really nailed that, man. Uh, <laughs> I heard you talk about this. That is, I mean, that is exactly what happened. Yeah. I mean, I've known since I was five years old that I wanted to be an actor. Mm. I've known it in my fucking core. Yeah. Like, my favorite book when I was like in fourth grade was Roger Ebert's top 500 movie reviews. <laughs> and I would go through and like <laughs> highlight yeah. actors and like, I don't know why, you yeah, know? Yeah. And I was just so obsessed with it and like, I would watch movies constantly and I knew that's what I wanted to do, but I was never, I never believed I could do it. Right. And you know, I think it was no fault of my family or whatever, but it was never an encouragement to, yeah. that I could do that or yeah. like follow a dream, yeah. you know, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, 
and I kind of just killed the dream dead like yeah. for a long time and yeah. you know I was in high school I got asked uh, by my friend if I wanted to try a drama class I was like that shit's for nerds I was like starting to smoke <laughs> weed and skateboard and listen yeah. to punk rock and I was yeah. like nah I'm good <laughs> and then but deep down I was like oh man that sounds like it'd be kind of fun you know but <laughs> I wouldn't let anybody know yeah and so I just it, it it lived within me forever. And then um, I moved around, I fucked off a lot. I had like, I just played in punk bands. I was a bartender, mm -hmm. book shows, you know? Mm -hmm. And I thought that was how it was gonna end for me. I was mm -hmm. living in Jacksonville, Florida, and I was bartending and doing that, like playing in bands. And I was like, this can't be it. Mm -hmm. Nah, this can't be it. Mm -hmm. And I actually ended up working as a PA on this music video because the manager of my bar, her husband owned a production company. Mm. And she's like, do you want a PA on this music video? And at the time I was like, I don't know what the fuck that means, but yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> and I got to this set locking up a fucking house. That's it. Mm. But it was on set of this music video, yeah. some pop star. And I was electrified. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Yeah, this has always been a thing. I need to like, okay, so acting. What was it about that though? Was it just the idea that the camera was around, this, things were being captured? It's it was just the energy of a set. Yeah, yeah, you know, it was yeah. just how everybody was moving and in, 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 uh, just kind of the hive of it, you yeah, know, and feeling yeah. like you're a part of something yeah. that felt special to me at the time. And um, so I just, I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna move to New York and I'm gonna work in crew mm -hmm. and I'm gonna try, I'll start a production, then I, I went from production, I went to locations, I went to arts department, I tried AD work. And the same, how you worded it yeah. is exactly what happened. I went, fuck, it's acting. It's always been acting. <laughs> yeah. And I have to go back to bartending to figure this shit out. Yeah. You yeah. know, but you nailed that. It was pretty yeah. good. So when you do say, okay, it's gotta be acting. So like, what did you, what did you think you needed to, to get that ball going, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. if, 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 you, if you hit one of these other jobs and you're like, I love this art direction uh, stuff, you know, you would, you would, you, there would be a clear path. You would just yeah. have to get those kind of jobs. It's not a clear path when you realize, actually, I do want to be an actor because there's different ways to go about this. Oh my God, <laughs> yeah. Especially Absolutely. when you're whatever, 30 years old 30, or something. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I did the thing that everybody does. You have to do, you get on backstage, you get an actor's access, yeah. you, try to do student films or whatever to put a reel together and hope that you can send this to a rep that your friend knows and you know they like you enough or see something in you and um i've never done uh stage work ever mm -hmm. and i have that's something i want to do at mm -hmm. some point but it was all just like okay film and television is the is the goal and um yeah, I was just grinding, man. I was just going to auditions. I lost so many bar jobs because I like had couldn't get my shift covered and they were like, well, you have to. And I'm like, well, then I quit because I have to go do this. Wow. Like I've been kicked out of apartments because I couldn't pay rent because I had to go. Mm -hmm. I was trying to make it work. Mm -hmm. I've made a lot of sacrifices, which you have to yeah. when you're pers when you're pursuing this career. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, so it wasn't easy yeah. by any means. And, um, you know, what was it that was that happened, it must have been something that happened where you, where you were like, okay, I'm good at this. It's not just a thing I want to do. Mm. Was there something that happened like mm -hmm. that in this time? Yeah. I got really close to a lot of things right off the bat. Mm -hmm. I got a manager probably a year and a half into pursuing. Wow. And um, they started getting me into rooms. Yeah. And I got close to a lot of things like, mm -hmm. A lot of callbacks, pins, like, you know, and I was always so close, mm -hmm. but never got it. Mm -hmm. And I just had no credits, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but honestly, getting those mm -hmm. made me be like, I have something. Mm -hmm. There's something that I'm not crazy. I'm not delusional. Like, something right. is working here because they called me back. Right. And that was kind of like the uh, inception point of feeling like, I believe in myself that mm -hmm. I can that I can do this. Mm -hmm. And then there's been so many other things since then that yeah, it's just yeah, yeah. further sure. enforces that validation and that that uh it's like it is validation. It's yeah. it's like you're on the right path. Like keep doing this. Yeah. Did you realize okay, there's a formula to auditioning here. Mm -hmm. Did you cultivate a way to deal with auditioning in this time that worked? Yeah, I think I mean, I was always, I think like most actors, you're just feeling sick. <laughs> and yeah. Your nerves are shot. And 
I mean, there'd be times I would like dry heave in a bathroom before I went in and I would, and I would somehow get those jobs, you know? And like, and I'd be like, I'm going to fuck it. This is not going to work. But I yeah. think for me going in the room and you learn over time, like you're just like that, I'm going to do this differently. I'm going to go mm. in. I'm not going to talk so fucking much. I'm going to mm. go in and be like, how you doing? And then just black out, <laughs> mm-hmm. do the thing, come to and be like, thanks so much and mm. leave. I think there's something to be said about leaving an air of mystery in the room, mm-hmm. which you don't get to do anymore. Mm-hmm. Self tapes just took a, some time to get used to. Yeah, but like I know I have you know I know people who just haven't they can't grasp it. They're like I don't know how to do this, yeah. and I I just put a lot of work because I'm like, well, if this is the medium now, I have to figure this out. Yeah, you know. And um, at this point now, I almost prefer it because at at first I would like too many takes, you know, and like you yeah. have too much agency over your audition. And I yeah. don't love that part about self tapes is I love that you get three chances max in the room yeah. and like they worry about the frame and all that shit. Yeah. And you just do your job, you yeah. just do the work and that's it. Yeah. Um, I do miss that, but I've become, uh, I feel uh, pretty comfortable with mm-hmm. self tapes at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what about when, so when we, when you started to land a lot of stuff Mm -hmm. and you're going to these sets and you're and sometimes these shows are have been going on for a while and there you are just popping in Mm -hmm. for for to do your one part and this one day or two days or whatever a couple uh, episodes sometimes Mm -hmm. how were you navigating that idea of having to figure out how to work in the way that you work best Mm -hmm. on these sets that are already going these kind of machines that are already running well that all comes back to malleability right so that all comes back to just being like okay i know what my part is on this today or you know i know what my arc is in this and i know that i need to just approach this i need to be open to everything you know um i need to be open to director's notes i need to be open how other actors work i need to be open to Mm. their behavior uh off camera, I need to be open to all these things and not, I try not to be influenced by much of it. Right. I don't have expectations. Yeah. I'm just like, I don't know what I'm getting into today. Right, I, right. And I, that's, how, that's the best way to approach it because right. otherwise you're really fucking yourself over. Yeah. Um, I, do, I do not go into it expectations. I go into it n- knowing that I know my lines enough. Yeah. I don't even know my lines. I, there's times where I'm like, I will read it and I know them, but if it gets to like kind of on the cusp of, do I remember them? That's the best place for oh, me. Oh, interesting. Because then it comes out, it's just a lot more, it allows it to be more malleable. Yeah. It allows things to come out differently every time. Mm. Uh, Cause I just don't want anything to feel rehearsed ever, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and so. Well, that could be kind of scary too though, right? I mean, yeah. so, so yeah. <laughs> it's horrifying. <laughs> yeah. So Definitely. you're like, that. you're, 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 like you're dancing rope. on the yeah, yeah. you're mm-hmm. on the tightrope of both uh, uh, the 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 security of your of your lines, but also the security of the way you're doing it mm-hmm. are both not secure. And so, but that's but you you know that that's the right way yeah. to to approach this mm-hmm. because you're then you're, the energy of that not knowing is what you're working with in the moment. Exactly, exactly. Yes. And it took me a while to get to that because yeah. in the beginning that terrified me so deeply that I was like, I can't, like, I have to know, I have to show them, it has to be perfect, it has to yeah. blah, blah, blah. And now I'm just like, nothing needs to be perfect. Fuck perfection. I'm just gonna go do whatever comes out of me that feels real, that's that's what I want to do. And if I fucking forget a line, whatever, you'll get to it, you'll fig- you'll stop, start again. Yeah. And it just, it takes time to yeah. get to that place, you know? And I've only been doing this for realistically like eight or nine years now yeah. you know and yeah. and so i know there's so much more for me to learn and yeah. i'm really excited about that for myself and like and to add more tools to to my box yes know? yes yeah. let's talk about barry because it's interesting how you you loved this show yeah. and you wanted to be on this show and kept hounding your representatives every season. please every single season please find me and then you, they were like how about this guy he mm-hmm. just has one line you're like no nope <laughs> nope absolutely not well to a certain point too at this and i just believe that it's kind of a, a side note i think that trajectory is everything in this business yeah if you if you have it depends on what your where your sights are set yeah right i think that at some point you have to for me personally i said five co-stars 
no more. And like, cause I just said like, I need to do that. And I know that I want more than this. And so after that, I can't do it anymore. And what that did was give, I was working a lot yeah. and then didn't work for a year and a half mm -hmm. because you have to like be seen mm -hmm. a different way a lot of the times, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so I feel like the trajectory is everything. And so I'm very picky mm -hmm. even now. <laughs> with what I take. Yeah, that's the way you gotta be. You I have guess. to, yeah. you have to. Yeah. Um, I'm, I won't just take jobs to keep my health insurance. I won't, mm. it's, it's, I'll, I'll turn down things because I just can't connect to the character. Mm. And I'll, I'll give it time, but if I can't, mm -hmm. even if it's a great project, I'm like, this isn't right. Mm. And it's not for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, thankfully, you know, all my reps, that's that cool. But is, do you think like something's going to happen if you do something that you think is not right for you, but others think is right for you? Mm -hmm. If you take that, is something going to happen, do you think, to your process or something when you're not reaching something that you, you know, is that what it is? I think sometimes I'll, listen, there's definitely obviously times where they're like, no, that's, you You have to read for this, you know, and like, <laughs> yeah. this is not like, this is a really good opportunity. And most of the time I know what it is, you know, yeah. from doing my research and stuff on the, on the uh, audition or job. But you don't need to keep pushing something you know shouldn't be pushed. Unless it's a challenge. Like I love, right. challenges everything for me. So if I get something to say, oh, it's this and you're playing this type that you played four times before, I just, I yeah. don't, yeah. I don't, yeah. you yeah, know, yeah, I don't, yeah. that's not, it doesn't interest me. Yeah. You know, I want to keep continuing to push what kind of roles I can play, especially being, you know, tattooed actor right, and stuff too. Right. I think that's a thing that I've actively worked against because mm -hmm. I started getting tattooed when I was like 17 years old mm -hmm. and it's a part of who I am, you yeah. know, kind of never stop. Um, there's within reason, obviously, yeah. but for me, even now, like I won't use my tattoos in shows. Like mm -hmm. for Barry, going back to Barry, yeah. I remember Bill saying we, we really like the your tattoos of the character. I said, oh, I don't use my own tattoos. Wow. And he was like, oh, okay, well, we'll just cover them up and put fake ones on top. Wow. You know, and it's like, and I realized throughout that's the years so that that's, cool. oh, this can happen. This is this is doable, you know? And when I remember in the makeup chair talking about them, most makeup artists are like, everybody has them. That's not a big deal. Like sometimes yeah. you have a lot, it's a pain in the ass, but it's okay. It's still like, you yeah. have the job, you know? Yeah. Um, I just never want to be, boxed in yeah. that way and I yeah. think I'm actively working against it. And that, but that must have ta taken a little bit of courage to say to Bill Hader, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not using these, yeah. you know, and, and to stick to your guns with that, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. I didn't know, I didn't realize that. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I mean, and, but just knowing that it could be done, it's, it's yeah. like, it's, it's, you must get annoyed when people are like, oh, well, this is a problem. This is going to be a problem. Yeah. Like, no, it's not actually. Absolutely. I mean, and there, <laughs> there was a time, like I won't go into crazy details, but there was, uh, I lost essentially what was the biggest job in my career due to my tattoos. I remember you, you, we were uh, uh, conversing about that. Yeah. Fuck. And man. that was a brutal time. And that was a, you know, it was sobering. But I understood why, because I was going to be essentially half naked for half of the movie. Uh, and it was going to be a pain in the ass. Yeah. You know, but... They, sh I feel they should have done their due diligence before they gave me the job. Right. That was to save heartache for everyone and pain for everyone. Right. Um, right. But you know, and it's a it's, learning. It's, it's, well, it's doubly uh, painful because you know that it's it, if they really wanted to though, yeah, they didn't have to. They could do deal with it. Yes, absolutely. It could be dealt with. Yeah. But that's so cool that they they for this character mm -hmm. they retattooed you yeah. kind of mm -hmm. with these got this these this guy's tattoos yes and and what is it like to have other tattoos on I like mean, is it like putting on other clothes kind of yeah, yeah. it's like I'll look at it and be like oh, yeah that's not mine I, it's it's kind <laughs> of like I love more than anything when they cover my tattoos and don't put anything mm -hmm. on them I'm mm -hmm. like. Oh, that feels weird, yeah. but I actually don't like it. Right. I'm like, this doesn't feel like me. So you, but you, you, do you, do you spin that into, okay, that this, this is, is what great. the character feels oh, like? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so important for me a lot of the times. Like it just, it's a kind of separate from myself too. Cause it is kind of like a, you know, it grounds you into yourself to mm -hmm. see the artwork that you know well, you mm -hmm. know, and mm -hmm. I want to be separated from that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and so I'm, I'm, 
I just never want to be tattooed actor guy. You right, know, I right. have, uh, in my opinion, too much to offer. Yeah, uh, to be that. Yeah, um, absolutely. But when a role comes mm-hmm. in the last season of Barry, mm-hmm. <laughs> that you're like, okay, that's the one I want to pull the trigger for. Oh yeah. What was it like auditioning for that, knowing like this is the last season? Yeah, I and, know. and this is something you've been wanting oh, to get God. on. The pressure I felt, and just doing a tape with my friend Ali, it was like it, it, it the pressure I put on myself yeah. for it yeah. was pretty immense. Um, and usually I can be like, all right, she's gonna do her thing, and da, 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 you yeah. Know? And this one, I think we did a little, we did a good amount of takes for it. Uh-huh. And I, I hate to admit because I'm, I like to do as little as possible. But this one, I was so, mm-hmm. I have, I have to get this part. I have to be on the show. It was my favorite show at the time, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I have to. I know that I'm right for this, the world that this lives in. Like, yeah. I have to get this. Yeah. And um, this usually doesn't work. No, never. <laughs> Dude, never. Somebody I've, who wants something this bad never, like that never. and has that much pressure, nope. After I left her house taping, I was like, well, I pushed too much into the universe and, yeah. I, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to get it. And, blah, blah, blah. and I'm like, it's not, it's not, it's not going to happen, you know? And because uh, that's what I know. And also, it's my favorite show. Right. You never get your fucking favorite no. show. No, so no. that, when I got that call, I was, I leapt out of bed for yeah. sure. You know, yeah. that was like, yeah. yeah, that was a dream. And you were saying that this is a good set, right? Mm. They, they, this is, these are- Best set I ever worked on. Is it a top-down kind of thing? Yes. Is it hater? Yeah. He treats everyone, like I, my first day of rehearsal, Bill just treated me like like an old friend. Mm. You know, it was mm-hmm. like we had known each other for mm-hmm. a while, you know, mm-hmm. and, it, and it kind of went that way with everyone. Mm-hmm. Like um, writer and producer, uh, Duffy Boudreau, like he also was the same way and him and Bill grew up together since mm-hmm. they were like 15 years old, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. and it was so welcoming and so um, encouraging. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was, you know, there'd be a note maybe like, just try it this way. Mm-hmm. Or like, now do it your way. Now, mm-hmm. you know, it, it was, there was so much agency that I had with that character on that set. Like mm-hmm. one of my favorite things that happened on that, on that job was there's a scene with me and Sally and we're sitting across from the, in mm-hmm. the diner, right? And it said in the script that we're drinking beers. And I was like, this, I want to foreshadow what's about to happen to him in the bathroom. And so I'm like, he is, he's this little boy who's masquerading as like this tough, badass motherfucker, yeah, right? Yeah. And so I said, I actually don't want to be drinking a beer. I want to be drinking chocolate milk with a straw. You're the one who said, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I brought that up and uh, Bill really liked it and sent That's someone out so to get cool. chocolate milk. And, That's so cool, man. Yeah, and that was so, and just drinking that chocolate milk with a straw made me feel like a little <laughs> fucking child, you yes. know? And like, yes. it helped me to get to what, I mean, I, I can't remember the sequence. We, we shot the bathroom scene first day. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, we shot that the first day that I worked. Wow. So we went back and then we shot the diner thing, but I needed to have that, that little boy energy Mm-hmm. So when we got to the bathroom, that it would just you're all... kind of retroactively like doing leading up to what you did exactly like uh, in, in a way yeah, <laughs> yeah knowing yeah, you yeah. needed that to Definitely. get to what you did mm-hmm. that's so cool and it's so cool that he took that yeah from this person who's there just for for this one character yeah you know. But, but it's such a great idea, though. He'd oh, be an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> but oh my god, man, yeah. that's so cool. And so that gives you that gives you so much. Even we keep saying agency, and there maybe is a better word. You feel like you're a part of the creative. Yeah, it's team. collaborative. It's collaborative. Yes. This is the way. This is what we need out of this mm-hmm. art, right? Like this it's is when people come alive. Yeah. yeah, they come alive with this. Yeah, it's not like he wrote it; he's directing it, mm-hmm. but he knows enough to like change that yeah. for that, and then give you what you need to make that come alive. Exactly. Oh. And he hires people that I mean, you know, just you hope the director hires people that they trust. You yeah, know? and then. And they trust you yeah. to make choices like that, right? And come with ideas like that, you know. Right. He really did. It was a lot of freedom on that set, and it was just such a unicorn of a set for me. Yeah. Just from like the top to everyone else, like it was just 
It's my favorite favorite job. Amazing. I guess that's it. Yeah. And you're so good in that that, oh, thanks, that, man. that role, bro. Appreciate uh, it. The but what was it like doing that that bathroom scene first though? Yeah. Because there you are on your favorite show, on this in this Ooh. weird scene that you have to with this actor that you've been watching for three seasons. I know, and I really yeah. admire her. Yeah. Like I just really respect her. Um, Were you ever in a scene like that? Never. That oh. was my first my first on screen kiss. Whoa. Was that scene? Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. First one, man. Yeah, and I was like. Wow, I guess it's kind of fitting that I'm just gonna be choked. Like it's it's like after it's not some <laughs> yeah. romantic like you yeah. know rom com shit. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, Sarah Goldberg, she was so she's so professional and she's so fucking good. Yeah, and that I didn't feel really nervous. That's amazing. And we had an intimacy coordinator on set with mm. us, and mm-hmm. basically just said, "Place hands here. You know, here's some gum. Yeah. Don't use tongue." There we go. <laughs> you know, and like, that was it. That's it but yeah. me and Sarah just like, we just got along really well and she really made me feel so comfortable mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. I was just like, cause I, I mean, I was a little nervous, like, okay, we're doing a one take shot of this, you know, yeah. and it's my favorite show. There was yeah. a lot of like yeah. factors, yeah. but yeah. because Bill and Sarah were so encouraging and so yeah. like, they were overbearing in any way. It was just so professional. And yeah. I was like, let's go for it. Yeah. You know? And yeah. we got that scene in, I think, three takes. Amazing. What is the deal with this uh, uh, prosthetic penis that wasn't used? <laughs> yeah, why, man. Why, why didn't they use a prosthetic penis? I'm, I'm almost afraid to ask, ask this question. Well, Bill just 86 did on the day. Um, wow. It was, it was, that was, I mean, <laughs> clearly uh, without, you know, it was obviously the most awkward fitting I've ever had. It was, um, we tried different underwears and different um, prosthetic. This is just, a, it had to be a bulge. Yeah, right? it was just a bulge. It was just gonna just be showing a bulge. a bulge. It was like, it was kind of like, instead of putting her foot in my lap, uh-huh. it was gonna be showing her the bulge. I see. That was it. I see. And then Bill was like, I don't think we need to show it. Yeah. And just, boop, gone. <laughs> And I was like, cool. Yeah. Good. yeah. I think in the, the way he did it was perfect. Yeah. You know, it probably just, would have been too much. It would have been too much. Yeah. Even for that show, I was like, they're yeah, showing? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, and then the way it ended up, I was like, nah, that makes more yeah. sense. Yeah. Too, yeah. 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 You know, but, but uh, it, it, this is a moment not many people are in uh, with, with costume where, mm-hmm. you know, people where you're having to crack jokes about penises mm-hmm. and they're actually fitting them. Yeah. In your pants. Yeah, we're all just laughing. Oh, okay. The whole time we're all just laughing. <laughs> I mean, it was early like, morning. You, you know, <laughs> do you worry about like, should I be laughing too? Like, it's like no. this. No. No. We're all <laughs> laughing. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. What the fuck yeah. are we doing? You know, it's like this is ridiculous. <laughs> what we do as a job is ridiculous. Yeah. You know, it really yeah. when you when you break it down to the core, it's fucking silly. Yeah. But I love it. You know, and like <laughs> as long as we're on the same page. Great. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Right. It's not like you're the one who's bringing in a plastic penis. No. Oh, jokes. what? No, no. That's psychotic. They should <laughs> escort me off the lot at that point. <laughs> Just know your place. Yeah. I think it's really important. And I think that um, a lot of, it just seems people don't do that, yeah, you know, yeah, and they, yeah. they speak out of turn or they uh, like asking actors for selfies and photos oh, and no, stuff. I'm no. like, I see that with, with other people and I'm like, what are you oh, doing? No, 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 like no. people were like, oh, you work with Tom Hanks, you take a picture? I'm like, absolutely <laughs> fucking not. I want this motherfucker to maybe hire me in the future yeah. as a producer, dude. Yeah. Like that puts me here. And yes, right. of course he's iconic, but I want to feel like we right. are equals. You right. know what I'm saying? Of course. You have to, because otherwise yeah. Yeah. you're putting yourself in. Yeah. 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 Uh, so accomplishing what you set out to do. I mean, that's huge that yeah. you're like your favorite show. I that's want to get on it. You got it. You got a memorable, memorable uh, role, mm-hmm. you know, on this, on this show. How do you work that kind of success into helping you keep this whole thing going? Well, the shitty part about that is within two months, Strike happened. Oh, right. So it did buoy things, and I did feel like there was a lot of momentum building. I just came off of the Apple series uh, right before that aired, and like I was like, okay, like this is gonna be all right. We're gonna move, and then the strike happened, and it just kind of felt like 
not the momentum has been stunted because we're just starting to get back into it now. Yeah, yeah. But like it did. Yeah. I, you know, it went from May until what? No, but December. Yeah. You know, yeah. and like, so all that, like where you did feel like it was going to boo you, you were like, well, it just took me back under. Yeah. Um, and I'm hoping that it made enough of an impression on, and I got messages from certain people and stuff like that, that made me feel like, oh shit, like this is really being seen. Mm -hmm. And like for the first time, maybe, I mean, there's been a couple times, but like, you know, people recognizing me or something mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. Barry mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, like people watch this fucking show, mm -hmm. especially people in the industry. Yeah, for sure. So, um, I'm hoping that just carries over in some way and they'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, you know, it's got but to. What is something that you not only can do in terms of a character, in terms of a type of performance, but you can do well that nobody knows yet, mm. that you maybe got a glimpse of and want to do more of and know you can? I mean, I know that I want to play the other side of the law, <laughs> you know, like yeah. I, I've definitely played characters that aren't criminals or villains or delinquents, but few and far between, yeah. right? Yeah. And I know, like, I've auditioned for doctors, cops. Like, I, as much as I don't fuck with police, I yeah. want to play one so badly yeah. because I just want to play the complete antithesis of what I usually do. Yeah. Um, and so. I know that I could play like a like a good like rookie cop or something like that. Yeah. That's like kind of the top of the list, which is interesting because of my own beliefs in the world. But like yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's uh it just feels it just it would be so um satisfying to be like to show people that if you cut my hair, you give me a clean shave, you cover all my tattoos, yeah. Yeah. I, I I'm capable of this, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um and then I guess also the other one I really was excited about was the job that I mentioned that I lost because I was playing an Olympic rower in the 1930s. Mm. And that was like, okay, that's completely different from yeah. anything. I'm not even fucking athletic really, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a lot that was gonna have to be done to get me to a place yeah. uh, physically. But um, yeah, I just want to play the good guy, but not the boring good guy. Yeah. I don't want to play, I don't want to be the straight man. I don't, I don't, that doesn't interest me. I don't want yeah. to be the dad, like, yeah. unless it's in a cool project with like people that I really respect or I'm right. working opposite someone that I can't believe I get to work with. You right. know, those right. are all right. factors that play into that. Right. But right. Um, yeah, I just love, I'd love to just be like, yeah, I don't know, good dude. Because you are working, initially with this foundation of unconscious work mm -hmm. and trying to have that into your body. And every time you open up a script, you're entering something into that instrument, right? Mm -hmm. and, you, and do you feel like you have to cultivate some kind of existence to keep this thing fresh? No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. I didn't even get the question no. out. No. No, I don't. I, I, like I said, it's very lucid for me. So I don't, like, I'll watch movies. Yeah. Like, that's kind of, that's my, that's my fucking sanctuary. That's my class. Yeah. It always, since I was a kid, you know? Yeah. And, like, I've taken classes. Like, I took a class over the summer. Right. Just yeah. to, like, do something. Mm. And it didn't really fucking do anything Interesting. You know? Like, I just... I've tried coaching, tried private coaching to see if, yeah. okay, let's see if I can get something. And I feel too influenced and I feel like I start overthinking things. Yeah. And I'm like, I have to operate on my instincts. Yeah. Like my instincts have gotten me this far. Yeah. So I have to just keep trusting that. Um, and so like, yeah, watching movies is basically it. Because I was worried about, especially the strike, right? Like yeah. my last tape was in June. And then my next one was uh, in December. Mm -hmm. And I was worried I was gonna be rusty. Mm. I was like, am I gonna remember how to do this? I don't know. Cause I hadn't done shit. Mm. And I just clicked just right in, you know? And, I, and it felt almost easier. It felt almost like I could tap in just like, I, I don't know. I just felt like I had an in easier than I had before. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know what that is. Yeah. I don't know if it's just not putting weight 
on every putting right. weight on the craft and weight on yourself and just being like okay like i trust my instinct that's it right there yeah that's it right there mm-hmm. do not lose that no do not let anyone fuck with that nope <laughs> i have it <laughs> yeah that's if I you can't. have that because a lot of a lot of people are trying to get something mm-hmm. like that yeah to yeah. operate in Mm-hmm. or they're trying to lose things that that's were. part of the great process losing yeah. things to uh, to operate with those tools yeah because we all have instinct but yep. we have stuff on top of it mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly and there's times like you know i i feel like i will operate on my instinct and then i'll like i will there have been several times where i'm like i'm gonna go try just see i'm gonna go try working with this private coach yeah. that coaches these people that i respect just because like i'm like I need to know that I'm in good hands yeah. and see what happens, see what comes out. And it's been a very rare time where I, I feel like I'm in my body when I do it because I'm thinking about things too much. Mm-hmm. And I just need it to come from here, mm-hmm. you know? It's mm-hmm. all in the gut for me. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I think that sometimes I, 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 I fantasize about being like, oh, I have a coach with me all the time. And I'm like, I don't know if I need it. You know, and right. I think that sounds when you say that to people, they're like, "Yeah, okay, right, like right. that's really like pretentious or very um, uh, righteous of you." Right. But it's what it's how I feel. It makes sense, you though. Know? It makes sense with the way you're working. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, it does. Yeah. You know? And it, and it, and it actually can um, um, hinder you mm-hmm. if you if you try and work a different way. Yeah. You know, yeah. because you think that that's capital W work mm-hmm. by working by working that way, totally. and that's wrong. Yeah. You know, everyone's trying to get to working like you're working. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. right. You know, yeah, and that's the ideal way mm-hmm. in this crazy, uh, crazy thing. And that's one thing I, I'm I'm so thankful for is that. Listen, it's the whole thing where it's like, oh, I started late, and now I feel like I have less time on this earth, or whatever it is, yeah. and being like. And I try to let go of that and be like, okay, this is when you started. And if you started when you were 21, who knows where the fuck you'd be right now. Right. You know, and I think that the life experience that I have only helps with, you know, what I can add to, to, to these jobs and to these yeah. characters. I just want to be as raw and real when it comes to this shit. Like I don't, yeah. I want to hold on to the things like, I thought about taking speech classes because mm. I can sometimes mumble words or I sometimes mm. don't enunciate clearly, but I think that's there's something in that yeah i don't want and i can tweak that if i have to like and that's kind of why i thought about taking voice class for a certain project where i need to speak a certain way Mm -hmm. then i have that tool Mm -hmm. right but i don't when it comes to just working in general i don't want to lose that rawness i can't and i think in the beginning i was like i want to be like that and i want to try and like crap like mold myself a certain way and now i'm just realizing that authenticity is everything yes and and authenticity is everything when it comes to others' per- perception of you. Yes. Um, and so all I ever want to do is be authentic. That's yeah. why I keep getting tattoos because I'm like, this is who I am. This yeah. is who I've been my whole life. And yes. I'm not going to stop being me for any fucking thing. Yes. You know? And yes. I think people, the right people, will see that in you. And that, that, that they'll be drawn to you because of your, um, you know, authenticity. What that is doing is... It's raising your own self Mm -hmm. because that's what you're using when you act. Mm -hmm. Exactly. (laughs) And if you're trying to get to authenticity, you're lifting that up. And that is what you're using. Mm -hmm. You know, if you were hiding that, you were trying to get rid of the tattoos or you were just saying, I have to stop or whatever. Yeah. You're, You're diminishing yourself. Yeah. And yeah. it's actually not, um, um, you're not have access to your tool anymore mm. then. Yeah. The ultimate access. I think this is important. It hasn't really been talked about in this way, man, on the oh, show, really? I don't think. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because I think that that's somehow, people are saying, people think you're, you're, you're actors play other people. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's necessarily true. No, there's always <laughs> I think part they, of you. Right. It they, has you, to be you. You style. have to use you. Yeah. You have to use you, mm-hmm. the instrument of you. Yeah when you're doing uh, uh playing uh the, these characters yeah. and i think that that's and if if you if whatever you need to do to grasp the instrument that is you mm-hmm. 
in a in a in a more um, comfortable and clear way yeah. is helpful. Well, it starts like. with you. I mean, in the beginning of the script, it's like you have to find how these words relate to you as a person, yes. not the character. So, like that's where that's why I let it sit in the subconscious because then it connects to me. And then once it starts moving into this into the conscious space, I feel like I can start connecting it to the character. Do you know how important that is what you just said there? Because a lot of people just, or I, I, maybe they don't. I know mm. I do and I would, <laughs> if I was doing this work, would just be like, oh, I know this person. I know why they are saying this. Mm. They, they, Yeah. yeah. you know, or I, I know how to do this or, or I don't know how to do this mm. or whatever. But uh, uh, this meaning play that person instead of connecting the to Words yourself, to yourself first. first has <sighs> to be first because you have to you have to know the ins and outs of what these words mean you know and like what they mean to you because right. that's where you ultimately have to connect through right it's not being like i'm this person and this is how this person feels and like but that's just for me you know yes. like I, everybody has their own yeah, a myriad right. of processes that people have that's right but for me it's it's i have to connect to myself first yeah you know, then you're able to use it. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, it's so uh, amazing to have you on this show finally. Yeah. Uh, I wish you all the best in this new year that's coming up. This is your year. <laughs> yeah, 2024. Fucking, thank you, man. Um, Spencer Granice, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, man. It's been a pleasure for real. Back to One is a production of Filmmaker Magazine, which is a publication of The Gotham, formerly IFP. Listen to back episodes of this podcast at filmmakermagazine.com or wherever you get your podcasts.